Okay, thank you. I did it like three times. I don't know what happened. Okay, let's start over. Mayor Garn? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Woodall? Here. Councilmember Johnson? Here. Councilmember Strand? Here. Councilmember Wilson? Here. City Manager Knopf? Here. Chief of Police Connor? Finance Director Dillingham, Community Development Director Caldwell, here. Water Roadway Superintendent Jensen, here. Wastewater Superintendent Taylor, here. And City Clerk Dunham is present. Thank you. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public presentations. This is the time for persons who wish to address the council on any matter not on this agenda and over which the council has jurisdiction. As such, a dialogue with the council or staff is not intended. Items requiring council action not listed on this agenda may be placed on the next regular agenda for consideration if the council directs, unless a finding is made by at least two thirds of the council that the item came up after the agenda was posted and is of an urgency nature requiring immediate action. Please limit comments to a maximum of three minutes. Are there any public comments, hands raised, or email? Um, so I think we'll there start. are no hands raised. Thank you. Uh, Rosa, can we go back to the uh, the screen that shows the uh, numbers? So you'll you'll need to, if you're at home, you'll need to uh, dial star nine. Uh, to raise your hand to make public comment uh, at the meeting uh, this evening. So again, star nine uh, will raise your hand so that uh, the staff can call on you. And I am not seeing anybody raising their hand, but we can go to uh, City Clerk Dunham to see if there's been any uh, mail-in uh, comments. No online comments. Thank you. I was just waiting for more minutes to see if anyone called in. And still, still no hands raised. Then we Again, will move on. on. Okay, well, we will move on to the consent calendar. We have one item on the consent calendar, but anyone uh, from the council, staff, or public wish to remove the one item? Hearing none, is there a motion to accept the approve the minutes of August 18th on the consent calendar? Johnson moves to approve minutes of August 18th regular meeting. Thank you, is there a second? Woodall, seconds. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Woodall? Yes. Councilmember Johnson? Yes. Councilmember Strand? Yes. Councilmember Wilson? Yes. Mayor Garn? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. On to the staff report, please. City, city Manager. Uh, thank you, Mayor Garns, members of the council. This uh, staff report is on page 11 of your uh, packet. Um, so just a couple of quick updates. Um, the uh, city has been in the process of uh, hiring for a community services officer for the, uh, the past uh, month and a half or so. Um, at this point, uh, we will be re-advertising the position and uh, and recirculating it. So um, again, uh, this is an opportunity um, to uh, work in uh, code enforcement, nuisance code enforcement in the city, and then uh, 
animal control and kind of miscellaneous uh, lower level offense items uh, in, in the city. Um, so the re-advertising will occur over the next uh, two weeks and then we'll, we'll start to hold interviews again. We do already have um, uh, at least two applicants who would be uh, competitive for the position. So that's good to report. Um, and then the, uh, we will be requesting from the council just to individual uh, letters of support for the uh, ATP trail project, the river access project that the council um, approved uh, for the city to, to submit a grant application for. Uh, we'll need those letters in by the uh, middle of next week. And so we've already gotten a pretty good uh, response from people who are kind of doing a uh, roundup on securing uh, further letters that we add to the uh, grant application packet. So um, I will be sending an email out to the council here uh, shortly, probably tomorrow, um, giving you a, a web address for a um, petition to sign. And then also we'll be doing an every door direct mailer uh, advertising the um, project to uh, the general uh, public in Rio Dell. Um, and then uh, uh, and then collecting all of those signatures by the middle of next week. Um, so with that, I'll return it back to the council and see if there's any other questions uh, or comments uh, to staff. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we will go down. I will start with um, Mayor Pro Tim Woodall. Do you have any questions, <laughs> any staffing? Yes. Go for it. Um, Okay, um, with public works wastewater, it, was Derek on? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, Derek, I just had a question for you. On um, one of the first items you have that you worked on, it says operation staff completed for first round of bench testing for chloramines. Have we gotten the, the results from those tests? Yeah, so a part of the uh, sanitary sewer evaluation we're working on with uh, GHD, um, one of the issues we're working on is the disinfection byproduct. And uh, yes, what we did in a clip, you know, uh, Cliff noted is uh, we just ran some sample effluent with a different type of disinfection strategy by adding ammonia to chlorine. And so far, um, yeah, it did. we did have some positive results. We're going to be doing a couple of other things to kind of um, see if it's going to be viable. I, I got a phone call with uh, Jamal from GHD, who is their disinfection specialist, either later this week or early next week to see if we can do a full scale run to the irrigation field and then do some more um, testing to see if it's going to be viable for um, year round um, disinfection method. But yes, we, we're, we're getting some positive results. Okay. That'd save us quite a bit of money if it works, right? Yeah, a lot of money. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for doing that. Um, also, for the public works people that have been watering the trees on the South Gateway, thank you because two of the trees that looked like they were gone now have leaves on them, just in time for them to lose their leaves. But thank you for doing that. And then I have a question, well, not a question. Chief, I wanna um, thank you for moving on that 611 Wildwood. Um, the people are really happy with th how things are going. And um, just this is a, just a question out of curiosity. I know they moved one trailer out. That isn't by any chance the trailer that they put up over on the old Eel River Mills property, is it? So, uh, Councilmember, I'm not sure that uh, Chief Connor was able to make it on the call uh, this oh, okay. evening. Um, so he oh, should be on the fine. next. He should be on the next call. Oh, no problem, no problem. Um, I, I just appreciate the work he did on on that this this time, and that was that was all I had. Thank you. Thank you, and. Um, um, Mayor from Tim Woodall, are we good then with the 611 issue? 
Oh, um, I, the, yes, I'm happy with it. And the people that um, I talked to, the people above them, and they're very happy with what's going on also. Thank you very much for that report. Uh, Council Member Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Garnes. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Council Member Wilson. Uh, just just a, a couple of minor questions was on the dis, uh, discussion with Agricultural Commissioner on possible hemp. Uh, is that a, a major operation or a major change to put hemp up on the Densmore Plateau? Um, so it would be uh, Mr. Cortazar's property up there. Um, you know, I, my understanding is it's uh, somewhere in the area of uh, 10,000 square feet um, of uh, industrial hemp um, that uh, he thinks he can get in before uh, the end of the season, but uh, the uh, likelihood of that happening is, is pretty low at this point. Um, but uh, he is looking into uh, doing a uh, in, an industrial hemp operation up there. All right, thank you. Uh, I, I, I too is um, pleased to see the uh, law enforcement and the nuisance committee moving forward on 611 um, Wildwood. That's, a, that's encouraging to see that we're making some progress. And I think it's going to help the city uh, as well. Um, I noticed they fixed the street too, where they had um, somebody had painted on it. And then the other question was the uh, on Riverdale Holdings. Um, what is what was going on with Rio Del Holdings? Are they going to move forward? I'm not sure who answers that question. Okay. Uh, that might be a uh, uh, Kevin. Council Member Wilson, uh, Kevin Caldwell, Community Development Director. Uh, the Planning Commission held a meeting on August 25th to approve a, a modified subdivision layout of the property. I understand the property is in escrow, um, and the new buyer is aware of the conditions of approval. They are hoping to bond those conditions of approval so they could actually record the map and then complete the sale. Um, it's our understanding that Rio Del Holdings is going to keep the remainder parcel, and that is the parcel with the stockpiled soil that needs to be transported down to a, a Southern California landfill. Um, but that is the latest on Rio Del Holdings. So the, the building that they're looking to tra uh, transfer sale on is the one that's being constructed? No, Riddell Holdings is the 15-acre parcel just north of the old planer building, Humboldt 454, the indoor cultivation facility right now. Okay. Um, it is on the east. Yeah, I think you understand where it is. Okay, I got it. That was my, my mistake. Thank you for clarifying. No problem. Uh, those are all, that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Council Member Strong? Yeah, I was just wondering, um, city manager, mayor, did you guys get together with Danco or what's happening on that? Uh, so I did send a, a follow up uh, email uh, to uh, their representative, to Danco's representative. Um, she assured me that they are working on it, but we have not received a specific date and time uh, for a meeting. Well, I would like to continue to pursue the letter to the state then, um, uh, suggesting all the uh, issues that we've had with Danco on this project, because again, they're dropping the ball. And uh, I also spoke with the fire department and asked them to give us a list of the fire calls that they're making down there. Have you seen that list, um, city manager? I have not, no. Okay, so that should be coming and we may be able to add that to the uh, letter also. But I strongly feel we need to do this follow-up on Danco. Okay, um, is that, uh, how does that work, uh, city manager? Is that an agenda item? Uh, yeah, so we would, uh, we can uh, agendize something for the, for the next meeting. Thank you. Great, thank you. That's all. Thank you. And I think my questions were answered by questions that were already asked. So we're all good. And we will now move on to, oh, ah, 
Are there any public comments? Anyone raise their hand? Anyone who wants to speak to anything in the staff report? Currently, there are no hands raised. Thank you. And no emails received. Thank you both. Okay, then we will move on to um, ordinances, special resolutions, public hearings. Page 17, approve resolution 1462-2020, adopting the mitigated negative declaration for the Rio Del Water Infrastructure Improvement Project and adopting the mitigation monitoring and reporting program. City Manager. Uh, thank you, Mayor Garns and members of the council. Well, this item begins on page 17 of your packet. Um, it's rather lengthy and, and comprises most of, uh, of this week's agenda packet and volume. Um, so uh, the council last uh, received an update on this project back on uh, July 21st by uh, GHD. And, and uh, as we all know, we've been working on this project for, for quite some time now. Um, and we do have uh, Andrea Hilton on the line here to help walk us through uh, the latest uh, in this uh, in this project, uh, which is the uh, uh, environmental process for uh, uh, for the, uh, for the city. So Andrea hopefully is uh, unmuted and ready we are to ready to ready to begin. Welcome, yeah. Andrea. Thank you for being here. Thank you. So hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Hilton with GHD. I would like to note I'm also joined this evening by Rebecca Crow, um, who's our chief technical expert on this project. Um, I'm going to just kind of walk you through some of the updates um, from the last time we discussed the project and um, make sure all the questions that you or the public might have are addressed before you consider um, voting to adopt and approve the project. Um, so the CEQA document for the water improvement project was circulated to the public for the 30-day period and there were two comments received both from state agencies um, caltrans um, and the state lands commission um, we uh, this the nature of the comments of the state lands commission was essentially to remind the city that should any sensitive cultural resources be discovered um, within the footprint of their jurisdiction, which is essentially the Eel River itself, that they also be notified. And they found one small typo. Um, and so we've prepared a response to the State Lands Commission, um, adding in that requested language. It's not a problem. And um, that can be returned to the State Lands Commission and included in the final CEQA ISMD for this project. Caltrans um, recall that currently the um, water pipe that connects the city, both sides of the river is attached to the bridge. And one of the goals of this, the US 101 bridge. And one of the goals of this project is to upgrade that so it's more seismically resilient. we've considered three scenarios, two of which directionally drill under the Eel River in the third scenario, which would again, essentially attach it to the bridge itself, the 101 bridge. Um, and so the nature of the Caltrans comments was to remind us that any work we do within their right of way um, requires us to comply with the plethora of their rules and regulations for technical standards, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so, you know, the nature of our response again is like, yes, we will work with you too. Um, design the project so that you are happy Caltrans and we're following your the plethora of your technical standards. And that was it um, for comments received. And so what we have um, prepared for you in your packets um, is a, a response to comments, which essentially goes through each of these comments the received. Um, they're numbered from each agency and the response there too. There were no comments that were, you know, disagreeable or would cause a problem. Um, and then you also have the mitigation monitoring reporting program, which is the summary of all the mitigation measures that the city would essentially be um, responsible to implement, you know, before, after, and during construction to ensure there were no um, significant impacts to the environment. And then you also have before you the um, resolution and findings of the project, which is a summary of the project and um, simple findings. 
And that's what you essentially would be um, considering in your resolution to, to adopt and approve the project. Um, if you adopt and approve the project, a notice of determination would be filed with the Humboldt County Clerk Recorder um, later this week. Any, any questions um, regarding any of that? Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Andrea. Council, Council uh, Mayor Pro Tem Waddell. No. Council Member Strong. Yeah, I have some questions. So this is just for the um, mitigated mitigation, right? I mean, we're not deciding on a which one of these three we're going to be doing. That's correct. The, those technical decisions can still happen in the future. This essentially makes um, all three of those scenarios compliant with CEQA. Um, so all three scenarios have been evaluated, um, you know, by the CEQA process and, and, and included in the public notice. Um, and you can sort that out later. And so on page 35 of the uh, letter sent, uh, by the State Lands Commission, it talks about leasing. That's all addressed later. Yeah, so if you if the city were to pursue scenario one or scenario two, where you would directionally drill under the Eel River, the State Lands Commission um, claims jurisdiction to the underground portion of that. Um, and the city would be required to apply to the State Lands Commission for um, a lease to do that. Okay. I think that would occur the, at a future date. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. Thank you. That's all I have. Are you good, Sue? Yes, thank you. Uh huh. Uh, Council Member Wilson? Uh, I think Council Member Strand asked the questions I was curious about as well. So, okay. thank you. Council Member Johnson? Thank you, Mayor Garns. Uh, I, I was wondering how the uh, design is coming and when we might have a biddable package. Is there a, a timeline for that? This is Rebecca, can you guys hear me? Yep. Excellent. Um, so we reviewed the 65% design with Kyle and Randy in detail last week. Randy's following up on a couple of items and then we're gonna meet with him again. And so we should be finishing off, taking that information and getting the 95% um, done here in, you know, in the next month, month and a half or so. Great, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Rebecca. Um, um, I'll go back to Julie one more time. Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> yes. Yes, I unmuted myself finally. No, okay. I have no questions. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Um, well, um, so we need, um, I have no questions. A motion to approve resolution 1462 uh, 2020. I move to approve. Oh. Second by Johnson. So we have a motion. First by Julie. Mayor Pro Tem Woodall and a second by Councilmember Johnson. And actually, uh, Mayor Garns, before we oh. vote, uh, okay. we just might just want to verify that we have uh, no public comment. Thank you very much. It just occurred to me too. Uh, so, uh, Rosa, Rosa, can you place the uh, the placard back up on the screen, real quick? Um, so again, we have a 1-800 number, 1-888-475-4499 to call in. Our meeting ID number, which is the same for every meeting of the Rio Del City Council, is 987-1540944. Um, and when you call in, if you want to speak, um, to raise your hand, you dial star 9. So if anybody interested in uh, providing comment for this particular item, uh, please dial uh, star nine now. And that allows uh, Rosa, our operator, um, to identify you and make sure that we hear 
uh, what you are uh, saying. So again, uh, dial star nine to raise your hand if you're on a on a computer or a laptop. There's a feature uh, to uh, to raise your hand as well. But at this point in time, I am not seeing any uh, hands raised, Mayor Garns. Thank you, um, City Manager, and thank you for um, catching that for me. I appreciate it. So that um, being said, is there? I'll wait a few more seconds. No is online there? comments either. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we'll count to ten. Um, yeah, and then uh, we just want to do the vote here to clear out this item. Right. I was just giving a few more seconds. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Woodall? Yes. Councilmember Johnson? Yes. Councilmember Strand? Yes. Councilmember Wilson? Yes. Mayor Garn? Yes. Motion carries 5 0 to approve resolution 1462 2020. Adopting the mitigated negative declaration for the Rio Del Water Infrastructure Improvement Project and adopting the mitigation monitoring and reporting program. And now we will move to item two adopt the urgency ordinance number 381 2020, approving text amendment Title VIII, Health and Safety, Chapter 8.10. Nuisances of the Rio Del Municipal Code. City Manager or uh, City Develop Community Development Director. Thank you, Mayor Garns, members of the Council. This item starts on page 75 of your packet. And I'll give you just a second to take a look there get there. Um, I hope you've all had a chance to read it. Um, really what it does, it again, amends our nuisance regulations, and in this case, it regarding the use of generators to support um, basically illegal occupation of travel trailers. And I think a lot of this was due in part to 611 Wildwood Avenue, which I'm glad to hear is being resolved. Um, anyway, as we go through this, as the council knows and the nuisance committee heard, uh, there were some neighbors who had concerns about the use of generators. Um, all throughout the day and into the evening um, supporting uh, the illegal occupancy of these travel trailers. We felt that this was an urgency item that should be brought to your council um, to adopt regulations regarding the use of generators. And if you look at page 76, um, these regulations not only apply to the use of travel trailers, it also is in response to PG&E's public safety power shutoff, the PSPS. Um, in fact, when I was writing the staff report last week, uh, we were in a red flag warning and there was a chance that pg e may have, have to shut down the grid uh, in our area. Um, what we're looking at is uh, basically in regards to the generator, um, amending the definitions and they're basically in the middle of the page there, 8.10.02022, we've got a definition of prolonged power outage. And that means a power outage that is no less than four hours in duration. Um, then we go into basically the use of generators themselves. It says the use of generators except during prolonged power outages are subject to the following conditions. Generators for residential uses shall comply with the setback standards for the underlying zone district, be placed in an area that is reasonably practical for the homeowner that is least disruptive to the neighbors. Generators supporting residential uses shall not be operated during the hours of 9 to 7 a.m. Basically, it's 9 p.m. at night to 7 a.m. in the morning, except for as required for bona fide health and medical needs. Those people that are on CPAC machines or those folks who need to keep their medicine refrigerated. Uh, subsection B, during a prolonged power outage period, generators for commercial uses may be operational 24 hours a day, but should be shut off when not critically needed to minimize the nuisance or the disturbance of the neighbors. Um, we talked at the nuisance committee about uh, the use of generators and they were very supportive of it. We ran this by the city attorney and we felt that uh, these generators do affect the public health and general wel welfare of the community and therefore qualified as an urgency ordinance. 
the other item that your council is considering tonight um, is in regards to the recent proliferation of graffiti in town. As I'm sure most of the council members has, have seen, there has been a significant amount of graffiti the last three or four weeks in town. Um, graffiti is not actually identified um, in our nuisance regulations. Um, of course, it is considered visual blight. We felt this to be a cleanup to make sure that there was no question that graffiti qualifies as visual blight. Um, again, we ran this by the city attorney and he felt comfortable that we can include this as well as an urgency ordinance. Um, as such, we've uh, put the, the draft ordinance together in your packet and that draft ordinance actually starts on page 78 of your packet and it's ordinance number 381-2020. Therefore, we recommend that your council open up the public hearing, deliberate among yourselves, take any public comment or written public comment as identified by the city clerk. And then we recommend that you adopt the urgency ordinance. Again, that's ordinance number 381-20-20 with a four-fifths vote. A four-fifths vote is required for all urgency ordinances. Um, if you have any questions, uh, members of the council, members of the public, I'd be more than happy to, to answer them if I can. Thank you, Community Development Director Caldwell. We'll go back to the council. Council Member Strong. Kevin, um, so on page um, 76, where you read uh, listing the, the use of the generators, and then you have 8A. So is that only during a prolonged power outage or that's any time? It looks like to me that's an any time statement on A, where yeah. B would be just during the power outage. It's actually just during prolonged power outages, except during prolonged power outages subject to the following conditions. But so A except. So is that right? Uh, I'm, I mean I'm sorry, I missed that. I apologize. Uh, so 810.030, the use of generators except during prolonged power outage. So you're yeah. saying it's okay to use generators if it's not a power outage uh, anytime between 7 and 9 during the daytime. No, that no, the intent there and the intent there and it may, the wording may be a little, a little, a little loose, uh, but the intent there is that you can only use these generators during prolonged power outages. Um, you yeah. cannot use a generator um, unless there is a prolonged power outage. Okay, so I think that word accept, which probably is not in the real ordinance. So you know what, I I will check it and I will cert and I will run it by the city attorney to make sure that, that language is solid. Great, thank you so much, Kevin. I appreciate it. I appreciate you getting right on this too. Thank you. You. Thank you, Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Garns. Uh, it, we seldom have a urgency ordinance come before us, and uh, by my memory, uh, not only the if necessary to pass it, but uh, this goes into effect immediately. That and there is no second reading of the ordinance. So tonight, final night, one, and it goes into effect tomorrow. Is that correct? You are correct, Council Member Johnson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Council Member Wilson? Uh, just one question on clarification on generators. Are the, are the generators that are um, basically permanently installed, say they're, on, say they're hooked up to natural gas, do they, or do they have the same restrictions applied to them as the, I guess what we're, we're thinking of like a gas powered Honda? Yes, yes, they do. And actually, we've actually had um, in the last two or three years, we probably had at least two, maybe three of those installed. Um, they typically have, oh, it's it's about a minute delay before they, they kick on during these power outages. Um, now, that would be could be problematic because we do have the four hours or more, um, but we can certainly notify because there are just so few of them. Um, these property owners. And in fact, I know that one of them actually has to do with medical needs. Um, but there, I know there's just two of them 
for sure that I know off the top of my head, and I will reach out to them directly and let them know of the new regulations. Because there's no there's no requirement like our or I guess uh, regulation regarding the, the level of sound decibels that come out of it. Uh, where some of those that are there is yeah our, our noise or ordinance or excuse me our, our noise element uh, of the general plan um, does have 60 decibels at the property line these generators that are installed on a permanent basis are actually within housings and those housings attenuate the noise level theoretically um, just outside the box right at 60 decibels um, these manufacturers are cognizant of these noise requirements that local jurisdictions have. Um, so if it's a fairly new generator, um, they have attenuation built into their cabinets um, to keep those noise levels um, maintained at 60 or less. All right, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Pro Mayor Pro Tem Woodall. Yes, I do ask the question I was interested in. I just want to make sure that I understood the answer. Generators can't be used except when there's an emergency. I mean, my neighbor couldn't say at seven o'clock in the morning, turn on his generator and run it until nine o'clock if there wasn't an emergency. Correct. That is the intent. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't understand that. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I guess Council Member Lee Hall or all for like getting right onto this. I mean, that's really awesome that you, you've gotten onto it so quickly. Um, my, my question is, um, let's say a person's house goes out of power that isn't citywide, so no one else knows, you know, or only a couple of people and a, whatever's on that line goes out. So if, if you're, you're in the middle of something, you want to get something done. Is that then not allowed because there's no way that you can prove it's going to be longer than four hours? How does that work? Yeah, the language right now is four hours. So it would have to be out four hours before you can go out and start your generator. You know, and that's certainly an item that's up, up to discussion of the council. Should the council want to reduce uh, the recommended four hours um, to something less than four hours? That is certainly your prerogative. Okay. And so if, let's say, <laughs> I don't know why I'm being a pain right now. So <laughs> let's say um, your power goes out and you call City Hall and you say, City Hall, my power is out. It's not my fault. It's PG&E. I'm in the middle of doing something. Can you get, like, permission? Like, you, you know, like if you're literally in the middle of doing some document or some, something that you need actual power for. Is that something that you can like prove? There, there is no language that would provide for an exception. Okay. Um, under the current language, you would have to wait four hours before you can start your generator up and, and get back onto whatever you were working, that document or something. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I, I'll just let that go. Are there any um, public questions or hands raised, comments? emails there are no hands raised at the moment there are no emails received thank you then is there a motion for the um acceptance of approval of or approving the first uh, reading the first well this is the only reading uh to adopt urgency ordinance number 381-2020 Approving the text amendment, Title Eight, Health and Safety, Chapter Eight Point One Zero, Nuisances of the Rio Del Municipal Code, and yes. before I before I actually put that out there, Kyle, um, City Manager, I would ask: Are we supposed to make like an exception for, like Kevin said, he was going to go back and check on something? How's that work? Um, I think uh, we, uh, with direction to the uh, for the staff to work with the city attorney uh, to clarify the language. As okay, discussed. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so is there yes. a motion? I, I would like to make that motion, but I want to take the four hours out. Okay, is there um, 
a second to the motion. Well, I have a question. If we take it out and, and we change it tonight, we can still pass it as an emergency or because now it's not what it read in the agenda. No, you, you can um, still pass an emergency ordinance. Let's say that your council decided that two hours was to prolong power outage. Um, it would still be allowed as an emergency ordinance. Um, we don't consider that a significant change. And this is actually one okay. of the items I thought would be a talking point. Okay. Um, I, I, could, I could agree with Sue on that. Um, and Council I, Member Strong, I, do, do you have a, a time period that you are recommending? No, I don't think we should put a time frame on it. I think we should just leave it without the time frame. Okay, basically, just a power outage then. Yes. Mm -hmm. I. I'm changing my mind. I think two hours would be good. I would go with two hours. So, <laughs> but I'd like to hear. I'd like to hear somebody else's opinion too. Um, I was. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure about the urgency of a time frame. I guess convince me on that. If we're having an outage, um, the intent of this is so that we don't have. If my understanding is, isn't isn't so much a power outage issue as it's more of trying to correct the nuisance issue where people are creating a nuisance by running generators long periods of time at weird hours. Is that correct? That is correct. The reason that this was brought to your council was because of the situation at 611 Wildwood, and it certainly was not related to power outage. It was related to the supporting of uh, basically um, travel trailers used as residents in violation of city code. I, I, I see, I don't really see the need to have a, a time frame to wait. And, and particularly if people are gonna move, what I expect to uh, to see more people going to this uh, transfer switch station. I know the electrician people that I know had an awful big order for putting in transfer switches no, the generator, generac type automatic generator. So if there's a, like you say, it's a minute or a thirty second or a brief period of time, those generators automatically start, and then somebody would be, a, they'd have to go out and deal with it, other than they would be in in compliance because their generator automatically started. Oh, good point. They do it. You are correct. They, they automatically start, and then when power restores, they give it a little bit of time to um, to see the power stable and then it switches back and it uh... you are correct um i actually have a family member who recently installed one of these and uh it comes on in 20 seconds and then it starts uh once a week and it runs for 30 seconds just to make sure it's still working correctly um i have no objection or no concerns at this point um, regarding a time frame identified. I think the use or the intent here again was to focus on um, really the illegal occupancy of travel trailers and then supporting that occupancy with these residential generators, which became a nuisance as all the council member knows. I forgot about the automatic testing. That they do. Yeah. Thank you. So did um, Sue make a motion? Yes, oh, I'm she, sorry. She made a motion to remove the four hour uh, limit. Or I will second that. Stipulation. We have a motion to second. second to, I'm sorry, um, Councilmember Johnson, did you want to say anything with regard to what was re discussed after the motion was made? <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor Garns. Uh, today I had a, a couple hours to uh, just fiddle around and I. Uh, happened to be reading in our uh, council member's handbook, uh, Dr. Judge Rosenberg's rules of order. And uh, what we're doing now uh, certainly fits with that, motions in general, and then, you know, amended motions and whatnot. Uh, if you haven't read this recently, I'd invite your attention to it. That's my only comment. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, and I um, then it, it, did I call for public public comment? Because now we've kind of gotten off the train, off the rail. I mean, um, oh, is there any public comment? There are still no hands raised. Thank you. Um, no emails received. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Whittle. Yes. Councilmember Johnson. Yes. Councilmember Strand. Yes. Councilmember Wilson. Yes. Mayor Garns. Yes. Motion carries five zero. Now to the introduction, first reading by title only of ordinance number 3822020, amending existing sign regulation, mm -hmm. section 17.30.300, table 7-1 of the Riedel Municipal Code, page 86. Uh, community Thank you, Mayor Garns. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor Garns, members of the council. Uh, this was recently brought to staff's attention as part of the application for element seven when they sent their sign details in for review. Um, we actually discovered that on building signs, those signs that are mounted onto the building are limited to one per business. Um, we, as the council knows, adopted a comprehensive overview of the sign regulations, I think in the middle of 2018. Um, this was an oversight on my part. I should have thought this through a little more clearly. And where this comes into play uh, typically would be corner lots where you've got visibility of a, a side of a building. Um, for example, uh, the former Green Bean, soon to become Element 7 building, um, e and J Liquors. It also will come into play, hopefully, when the Todd property is developed. Um, along Davis Street and Highway 101, as probably member, many of the council members probably are aware of, uh, the city of Petaluma built a uh, shopping center, um, oh, I don't know, probably within the last five years, uh, just before you get, I believe, it's to Washington turnoff. And the shopping center, for the most part, backs up to Highway 101. And all of those businesses, or at least most of those businesses, have signage on the back of the building, letting those travelers know on Highway 101 that their businesses are just off there. And of course, they've got signage on the front of the building too. This is also true with the Freedman Building Supply Store in Petaluma. They have a sign on the back side telling them that's a Freedman's hardware store business. And then of course, a sign on the front side as well. Element 7 was willing to go through a variance process. Um, variances are very difficult to recommend approval. Um, we, I thought, since this should have probably been considered in the first place, it would be easier to amend the regulations to allow up to three on building signs per business. Um, we would not, we are not recommending we modify the maximum allowable area. In this case, in the town center and neighborhood center zone. That is 100 square feet. And on page 87 of your packet, you'll see table 7 1. And uh, again, another oversight that I just discovered this evening is that we are recommending the community commercial and industrial commercial zones um, also be allowed to have three up to three on building signs per business. And again, we are not recommending that we increase the maximum area the location of those signs if they wanted to put one on the front and one on each side for example if they had open or visibility from those sides um with all planning amendments of chapter 17 which are the zoning regulations we have to find that the proposed amendment is in the public interest um, we certainly believe the proposed amendment is in the public interest and by the way we need to reach out to the Rio Del Chamber of Commerce, and they are supportive of the amendment. Um, of course, in making that public interest finding, um, the success of the business, of course, depends on signage and visibility. And we certainly hope that is the case here, that'll help businesses be more successful in the city of Rio Del. 
We also have to make sure or find that the proposed amendment is consistent with the general plan. Um, the general plan does have a number of policies that uh, really call for uh, orderly commercial development, um, promote economic development. And then the third finding is that the process or the amendment has been processed in accordance with the California Environmental Quality mm -hmm. Act. Um, as we do many times, we rely on Section 15061. B3 of the CEQA guidelines that basically says if we believe that there can be or will not be any significant environmental effects of the proposed project, we can utilize uh, this categorical exemption or statutory exemption. And we are doing that in this case as well. Uh, therefore, staff recommends that you open the public hearing, discuss it among yourselves, hear any public comment that may be coming in, and then basically approve the first reading and continue the second reading and approval and adoption at your next meeting which is scheduled for september 15 2020 and with that if you have any questions i'd be more than happy to answer them thank you kevin um so i i have a question about the illumination the the, the element seven signs are illuminated yes they all look like um, at least at least two of them I know are. I would have to flip through the sign details right now to find out if that third one is on the side. And it looks like it is. So how does, is there like a, a lumen, uh, a number that prevents glare into someone's residence? No, we, we don't have a lumen or a foot candle threshold. Um, the finding is basically no glare onto residential properties. Um, and so we would, of course, that would actually be subject to after the thing is installed, if we determine that it's way too bright at the evening time, we would ask them to put in lower wattage bulbs uh, so it wasn't as bright, not cause glare into those residential properties. And that's but we do not have a that, that identifies foot candles or lumens. Okay, would that then be, though, enforceable? The, the reason I oh, ask is I like to think of the variance process, thinking that, you know, because now everyone, you know, could have signs and they could be illuminated and... Um, yeah, it's, it's the same standard we have for um, parking lot lighting, for example, that uh, the rays cannot extend beyond the boundaries of your, your property that you're trying to illuminate. And it is enforceable. It's a violation um, of the municipal code. And violations actually um, are considered misdemeanors and fines of up to $1,000 a day. Um, most people, if it is a concern, I would think would work with the city in reducing that potential nuisance to the neighbors. If not, um, we would have to take them, um, like anybody else, to the code enforcement process. Um, I'm hoping, and we haven't had to go there in my Eight years, I guess, since it's been since I've been at the city, um, to enforcing uh, to enforce elimination standards. Awesome, thank you, Kevin. Um, Councilmember Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Garns. Uh, Kevin, I I don't really have a whole lot of problem with uh, you know three signs on uh, a building like Green Bean or a corner lot or a corner building uh, in town center, but. I have a question uh, regarding uh, signage that, uh, let's say, is going to be out in the Riedel uh, Business Park. Um, and considering, you know, Glenn White's big building out there, uh, which abuts Highway 101, but it's in a, I guess, a industrial commercial zone. Uh, they would, according to my reading, would have one sign per project entrance. Uh, I guess you could enter from two different ways. So they would be allowed to have two signs. Is, is my understanding of this correct? You, as far as the existing regulations? Well, according to the table on page 87. Yeah, yeah, right now they would be allowed to have, well, under the staff's recommendation, they would be allowed instead of one up to three, they would be allowed to have one freestanding sign. And then the integrated development is more like a uh, 
more like a shopping mall. For example, the Strong's Creek Plaza sign there on Fortuna, okay. where they have uh, most of the tenants on that one sign. Um, but they would be allowed, Glenn White's project, for example, um, they would be allowed to have three on-building signs, not exceeding 125 square feet in aggregate, and then one freestanding sign, not exceeding 150 square feet in aggregate. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Councilmember Wilson? Uh, I think I'm done with um, what was presented. I'm sorry? No, I think I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Council Member Strong? So, yeah, my only concern also is the illumination of the signs. And, um, Especially so on Green Bean, there are residences right across the street um, behind the building there and to the right of it as you're looking at the front. Um, Riedel is not a big city, and I feel like it, this should be a variant, and it should be brought uh, at each each time just because then when you're looking at Davis 101, it would probably be all right to have illuminated signs down there from the freeway, but again, it would be specific. So, yeah, I I am I am against the illuminated signs on the side of the buildings in town center. So, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember uh, Mayor Pro Tem Woodall. Um, I'm okay with it since the square footage is staying the same. I would have hated to see three signs, you know, three big signs, but since they'll have to limit it to that certain square footage. Um, I'm all right with the lighting as far as what Kyle said, where, not Kyle, Kevin said that it has to stay within the boundaries of the business or w within the lot. I can, that one's good. Um, and the planning commission, I uh, like they um, reviewed it and recommended the amend amending the um, amending this at this meeting. So I'm good with it. Thank you. Um, um, are are there any public comments? There are no hands raised. No email comments. Thank you. Um, so I will ask for a motion. I would say I, I think three signs is excessive, but there you have it. Um, is there a motion and a second to adopt the ordinance or approve the ordinance and move it on to the second reading? Council Member Johnson. I so move. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Council Member Johnson moves for acceptance of the first reading of Ordinance 382-2020. Thank you. Is there a second? Councilman, Councilman Woodall, Councilman Woodall, second. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tim Woodall? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Strand? No. Councilmember Wilson? Yes. Mayor Garns? Yes. Motion carries 4 1. Councilmember Strong opposing. That brings us to. Thank you. Council reports. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. We'll start at the one in uh, Council Member Wilson. Any council reports? Well, the only comment that I have is that um, if you watch the news tonight or read uh, Lost Coast Outpost, uh, HWMA is opening up for CRV redemption uh, starting as of this morning. And the, uh, also, the um, Recology and Humboldt Sanitation are. Uh, applying for uh, decertification as CRV redemption centers. And when I talked to Director Duffy about that, uh, she told me that the, the reason for that is it's not profitable for uh, recology or sanitation to, to, to do the CRV. 
uh, Humboldt Waste Management subsidizes their CRD and recycling by about a million dollars a year through solid waste uh, disposal that they do at their facility. That in turn does not affect uh, the, the Riedel residents on that subsidizing to my knowledge. But anyway, for those of you that have bags of uh, aluminum cans and bottles, there's certain restrictions, but they're opening up uh, Tuesday through Saturday. Is that on Hawthorne? That's the one on Hawthorne? Hawthorne and Eureka. Thank you. Councilmember Strong? Yeah, so we had our, our HCOG meeting, which was went well. And um, there's not, I don't really have anything to report from that. Things are moving along on 101 and on uh, last chance grade. And um, we, they did shoot down our FAU, so we will still be getting less than the bigger cities, uh, but uh, we tried. So that's all we could do in that. And um, I think that's it. Also, we did receive the letters on the nuisance committee. We had our nuisance committee meeting, and as you can hear from tonight's results that, um, our chief of police is on top of the situation at 611 Pacific. We did get the letters from Barry uh, Knight and Seiford, Sifford, and uh, we'll see to it that those are also at the next meeting. So we thank you for your input of uh, everything that's happening out there. And we appreciate you taking the time to write us letters. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Garns. Uh, traffic committee met a couple weeks ago and uh, some research needs to be done uh, before our next meeting, which is scheduled in about another two weeks. So it looks like we'll be getting back to uh, somewhat of a more regular schedule for traffic meetings. That's it, Mayor Garns. Thank you. And uh, Mayor Pro Tem Woodall. Um, yes, I covered the redeck meeting for Councilman Johnson. Um, they did a program on um, project equity, the co-founder and the North Coast Small Business Development Center did one on succession planning and employee ownership, talking about how you plan for your businesses to move on once you decide to let go. Um, there was also um, a discuss the lease renewal on their building they may not need to have used quite as many rooms so um, they didn't make didn't make any decisions but they were talking about what they wanted to do and also um redick was invited to apply to the eda for a non-competitive little over five million dollar grant the grant will provide four hundred and sixty three thousand in administrative support with the balance being available for lending we talked about that. And the only other question I had is, um, do we have any plans for the study, for the economic uh, study session for the economic development? Um, we're still That's working it. on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And um, I have nothing to report. I think I wanted to thank, um, Councilmember Strawn and Mayor Pro Tem Woodall for your work on the uh, nuisance committee and appreciate um, the chief and Kyle and Kevin staff in general for all of your work to help resolve this. It was a pretty uh, unfortunate situation. So um, I think everyone's glad that it's being dealt with. So thank you all for that. And um, that's all. So is there a motion to say good night? Motion to adjourn by Johnson. Motion to accept. Is there a second? Second. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Good night, everyone. Have a good week. Good night. Thank you.